in the weaponry of God. Uh, we're going to look at Ephesians 6, and we're going to start in um, verse 11. And it says, Use all the armor and weaponry that God provides, so that you will be able to stand against the deceptive tactics of the adversary. So one of the very first things we see about putting on the armor of God and the weaponry of God, of all of it that he provides for us, is to be able to stand against the deceptive, deceptive tactics of the, ad of the adversary. So we see that the very first thing that appears to be uh, telling us is there are deceptive tactics by the adversary, by Hasatan, by Satan, and we need to be able to stand against it. And of course, to stand uh, involves the feet. And so as we look at today's teaching, I think I'm going to present it maybe in a different way than what has been presented before. Uh, possibly some other people have thought this out, taught it out. I have not seen it, haven't searched it out to see if anyone else did. I didn't want their teaching possibly to uh, cloud my thinking. But in Ephesians 6.15, it says, And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel, the good news of peace, shalom. So here we're using a term for getting your feet ready that is different than what most people think of, uh, of getting your feet ready. Uh, and it says to get your feet ready to be uh, shod or have your feet shod. And so we see that Paul, Shaul, is talking about a specific area to get ready or prepared for a specific purpose. Now, the verses before Ephesians 6.15, he referenced using all the armor and weapons that God provides so that you will be able to stand against deceptive tactics of the adversary. Paul, Shaul, his Hebrew name, he is warning us about what we need to do to be ready for the things that Adonai, God, has for us. And as we look at this, we can see that he wants us to put on all the armor to use all that he provides for us in the way of warfare, weaponry, and armor. And although he references the struggles and other uh, pieces of war equipment uh, that God provides, we're going to focus on the feet and the readiness or the preparedness of the feet. And we're going to look at uh, all of the different pieces of the armor uh, throughout the, the coming days, and we're going to ex examine them to see what it is that we have available for us to provide us with protection. This reference of being prepared is to do battle and war. Uh, we look in the scripture here and we see word phrases like use all the armor. He wants us completely covered and protected. And use all the armor, the weaponry that God provides. Stand against, meaning to take a stand against the false tactics, the tactics, uh, the evil tactics that the adversary would uh, put into place. Take up every piece of war equipment that God provides. And then he says, the battle is won. You will be standing. Therefore, stand. And again, the idea is you have to have your feet ready. You have to take care of your feet, your foundation to be able to stand in the victory of the battle that Adonai is preparing. So we have the words armor, weaponry, war equipment, and stand, and shod your feet with preparation. Now the word shod, uh, when I was growing up and still when somebody says shod, that's a term normally associated with horses, you know, or, or at least with me it is. Now the Greek word shod, hupodeo, means to underbind or to bind under oneself or to bind to. And we get a picture of binding something to our feet with the Greek word that is provided, this hupodeo. This verse focuses on the feet and its preparation for war and battle with the ultimate goal of victory, to win and be the one standing. That is what Adonai wants for us, to be completely prepared in the foundation and have our feet ready, shod with the gospel, the good news, death, burial, resurrection of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah, and how we can have eternal life through him, and his uh, understanding, his peace, his shalom that is to come. To have your feet shod. Shod is a term used with putting shoes on a horse. And the question is, why do you put shoes on a horse? What purpose 
are there for the shoes. I think as we connect this verse of your feet shod with the preparation, and it is about the battle against the deceitful tactics of the adversary, we can see some insight into this. You may gain and understand an appreciation of the term shod and its relevance to this if you'll follow through the teaching with me. To have a horse shod, it means you must prepare the hooves properly before shoes can ever be fitted. You don't just go out in the pasture, jerk a horse up, you know, put a halter on him, say, you know, get him to stand still and then start putting shoes on him. That's just not the way it is. There is preparation that takes place. And even within our lives, there is preparation that takes place that God, uh, God the Father works on us through his son, Yeshua, Jesus. There is a preparation before we're called into battle. There's a preparation for us as we are called to do different types of ministry. And so you have to prepare a horse's hooves before it can be uh, have shoes put on it. You inspect the hooves for abscesses. You look to see if the toe's too long. Is the heel too low? Is it club-footed? Is it foundered? Does it have cracks in its hooves? You know, if you have cracks in your foundation uh, as a believer, then if you're not fully grounded in the scripture and you have cracks in your foundation, in your belief, then that opens up for other uh, things to come in, other things that are impure to widen that crack. And eventually it will make you lame. It won't be able, you won't be able to walk, I'll say, in the truth of the scripture of the word of God because you've got so many cracks in your foundation. And it's the same way with horses hooves. If they're if they're cracked, it lets the water and the elements and the things get in there and it completely destroys the horse's hoof if it is, if it is not taken care of properly. So you want to make sure your horse's hoof is healthy, that it has good form and structure, that it's aligned. And it has to do with the uniform sole thickness. You know, uh, as a believer, we need to have a good, firm, solid foundation of the biblical truth. If you're too weighty, I'll say, in the New Testament, then your Old Testament side, which is the background, uh, is lacking. And so you don't have a uniform soul or uniform uh, foundation thickness. There's uh, bars that are used. Uh, you need a good heel base. You need a healthy frog on your horse. Your horse's hooves need to be functionally sound. And we as believers, to to take a stand in this battle, we need to be functionally sound. Uh, we need to have a good, firm foundation. In the process of assessing the hooves, you have picked the feet up, you've cleaned them, you've checked them for cracks, you evaluate how the horse is standing and how it needs to stand for better alignment. Some horses just don't stand properly because their, their alignment isn't good. And there's some basic steps before you put the shoes on. You use a hoof pick to remove dirt, mud, rocks, manure. And you know, that's what Adonai God has to do for us when we accept him as our Lord and Savior. He basically removes the dirt and the mud and the rocks and the things in our life that are a hindrance on how we can stand and walk properly. Then you use a wire brush to further clean it. You take care of the frog, which is an extra sensitive area. You remove excess flaky sole, but you don't cut too deep because you can damage it. You trim excess hoof wall with nippers. You rasp out and flatten the level sole, smooth the edges of the hoof, and then you size and fit the shoe to the hoof. You know, before we can go into battle, we need the Lord to get us balanced and trim away what will cause us to trip up. If a horse has too long of a toe, it will trip up when it's running. And so things in our life have to be trimmed away so that we can run the race, that we can stand firm in the truth and the foundation of the scripture. And through time, God trims these things from our life so we can be ready for the battle. He examines us. He picks us up. He removes the dirt. He takes care of sensitive areas in our life. He trims us and he sizes and fits us so we are properly shod or prepared. You know, God does not want us to lose the battle. He's provided the Bible. He's provided the scripture for us to have a good foundation. And we are to stay in relationship with the Father through Yeshua, Jesus, the Son. We need to pray. We need to fast. We need to uh, gather together. We need to study. And we need to seek a firm foundation through prayer, through seeking the truth in the scripture. And so he wants us to have um, our shoes, so to speak, fitted properly. Did you know that there are different types of shoes for horses for different purposes? 
Not all horses wear the same size shoe and they don't wear the, all wear the same size or style. And it's the same with us. Not all of us have the same calling. Not all of us have the same preparation. Not all of us go through the same trials and troubles and testing. But he prepares us so that we may be shod with the shoes that we need to accomplish the purpose, the race, or the action or activity that he has called us to. You know, the shoes come in different uh, styles and different weights. There's rim shoes that are used for barrel and polo horses. It uh, helps the horse have traction. Uh, so they can travel at high speeds and they can stop and turn. There's bar shoes, there's sliding shoes that are used on reining horses and it has a, a wider shoe. One of my favorite shoes uh, I think kind of to look at is the uh, baby sliders and that's an introduction for young reiners for the discipline. And I think there are quite a few people who are in baby slider shoes, so to speak, before they're officially shod with some other type of shoe. They are getting an introduction into the disciplines of God and into the disciplines of the Bible and the truth. There's racing shoes, there's keg shoes, but there's all kinds of shoes and sizes depending on the horse and what its job or action is. I thought one thing interesting is the inside of the shoe is called a branch. And I think of Yeshua as the true vine and we are the branches. And you know, when you stop and think about it, um, we get a little pattern and parallel there. Uh, there's shoes in double lot sizes to shoes that are as big as eight or nine inches but for the big, huge draft horses. There's pony shoes, there's mini shoes. And the shoe is for the protection and keeping the horse's feet sound. The shoes can also correct issues that they're having. And you know, that's one of the things is God wants to correct the issues that we're having. Faulty teachings, uh, faulty belief or doctrine. He wants to trim those things away. If we have cracks that we're uh, letting in, I'll say false teachings, uh, false prophecies come in. He wants to, to clean those up and, and get those uh, healed up and protected. You know, he may want to put a bar shoe on you to give you more support in the back of your hoof or heel and leg to help in case of an injury. And you know, when you stop and think about it, the church is one of the saddest places for injury. Many people have chosen not to go back to church because they've been hurt, they've been injured by so uh, by the church or people in the church, by people who call themselves Christians. And it can be one of the, the places where people really get injured and hurt. So we see that the horses are shod according to their use. And the question I wanna ask you is, what kind of shoes are you being fitted for? Your calling is probably different than mine. My testing, my study, and my times uh, of trials or study or experiences are probably different than yours. You're not called to do what I'm called to do, and I'm not called to do what you're called to do. And much like horses, they have different jobs. They have different uh, descriptions. They have different conformation, just like people do, sizes, bodies, um, weights, and size. And so we're fitted for different shoes or a way to be shod to ready each one of us for the battle that we are being called to. And my question too is, are your feet cleaned and ready to be shod? Because some people just aren't, aren't uh, ready to have their shoes put on them yet. Uh, they're still needing uh, some of that, uh, that hoof pick to let God trim away or uh, use the nippers to trim away the long toe that they're tripping over false doctrine or teaching to clean out some of the rocks and the rubble and maybe manure uh, that's on their foundation that they're carrying on their feet. But uh, hooves have to be cared for. And it also goes back to diet. If you want your horse's hooves to be good, they need a good quality food and hay. And you know, if you want your foundation to be good, you need to be studying the word with the uh, in the Bible and not just taking account for what people are saying or buying books uh, necessarily in the Bible bookstore. The best place to start is with the Bible, with God's word to start in the beginning, in Genesis, and look and see patterns and parallels throughout the beginning of the book, Torah, with uh, the life of Yeshua Jesus and the Gospels. You know, the book of John starts very much like Genesis. So you need good quality food or hay. And then you need correct supplements and minerals. You need uh, to fellowship with uh, good people, with people who aren't swayed by every new teaching that comes around. Uh, and you need constant access, or the horse does, needs con constant access to fresh, clean water. And the same with the believer. You know, Yeshua Jesus is called Mayim Hayim, the living water. And we need constant access 
to fresh clean water in the form of the truth of Yeshua Jesus, what he said and how he lived. A poor diet or nutrition leads to bad hooves or a bad foundation and horses cannot stand. And it's the same with us. If we don't have a healthy diet of prayer, of letting the Lord speak to us, of reading the scripture, of fellowshipping with uh, believers, like-minded believers, it can lead to poor nutrition and become uh, a problem for us with a bad foundation to where we cannot stand in the truth of the Lord. Horses' hooves need to be trimmed regularly, and we need the things trimmed from our life that causes an imbalance. You know, you don't just trim a horse's hooves once, or you don't just put the shoes on them one time. It's a constant upkeep of your horse's hooves. It's a, you have to be dedicated uh, to keep your horse up. The horses are made ready or prepared for action just as we are. The farrier, uh, the person who is shoeing your horse, who is doing all this prep work, he prepares the hoof and he selects the proper footwear for the job or action that the horse will be doing. You know, when studying this out, uh, I was just thinking how Yeshua Jesus is like that farrier. God knows everything in our life before we're ever born. He knows our free will, our choices, what we're going to decide, the things that are going to get us in trouble, when we're going to turn around and ask for forgiveness and how he's going to take us out of that trouble. And Yeshua is like that farrier. The farrier examines the horse. The farrier wants to do a good job for the horse to allow the horse to have any corrections made to its hoofs so it's not in pain, so it heals, so it can stand firmly, so it can do its job and not hurt itself or the rider. You know, if you put a, a too big of a shoe on a horse, it'll get pulled off easily and it can possibly damage the horse. If you put too small a shoe on a horse, it robs the horse of its productivity. There's no universal system for sizing shoes. And God doesn't size us all the same in making us ready to be shod and prepared. All shoes are not made from the same material. Some are more durable and some are lightweight. You know, some people can carry a heavier load in the battle, so to speak. And some people aren't up to it. They're not ready. They have to be uh, in the baby sliders. They're learning the disciplines for the reigning. Shoes are made and put on for specific jobs. To have your feet shod and prepared or ready for the battle with the gospel, the good news, so that you are ready for the specific job of witness, testimony, and being in the battle, and that you'll be able to stand. Shoes are made for uh, the specific job or action, and the foot, uh, it's what the horse relies upon to be able to stand properly. The foot has to be stable and sturdy. Our foundation has to be stable and sturdy. We need the truth of the scripture, the truth of the Bible, that we can live it, that we can explain it, and we can help others to see who Yeshua Jesus is. You know, the harder metal like tungsten or tool steel is used uh, on shoes that horses are going to be on pavement for less slide. And there's some of us that are out there, I'll say, kind of equate in that ability. Uh, we need a, a, a firm foundation, a hard metal, so to speak, to keep us from sliding. And then there's a plain shoe that gives less traction. Uh, and the farrier puts a, a grove or a crease in the shoe to prevent the horse from slipping under normal circumstances. And, you know, some people, even in just normal circumstances, things throw them, throw them for a loop. And they really need some traction in the days that we're in. And my, it's only going to get worse. Reining horses. They are fit with a slider plate, and it increases the slide. So they all are fitted for the action, for the job that they're called to. The farrier and the caretaker have to know which horse needs special shoes so that they don't injure themselves and others. And that's how Yeshua, Jesus, and I'll refer to him as a farrier, uh, looking us over, how he knows our special needs, and he knows how to prepare us to equip our feet, to shod our feet, so we don't injure ourselves and where we don't injure other people to where maybe we turn them off from the gospel. And my thought that rings in my head is horses that pull abnormal amounts of weight require shoes to prevent their hooves from wearing down. Uh, pastors, uh, leaders, uh, intercessors, a lot of them pull a heavy, an abnormal amount of weight 
and they really need shoes that help them from having their hooves worn down. Shoes are used for protection. And another favorite thought with the shotting of the feet in, prepar in preparation or making ready for the battle and war is after the shoe size is determined for the action that is coming, the shoe is placed on the hoof and minor adjustments are made if needed. And then the hoof and the shoe are secured together. You secure the shoe in place with nails. The nails are hammered into place, bent and remove the nail tips. And then you file away any rough spots. You know, when I think about the scripture that says, have your feet shod and be ready for the battle to present the gospel, the good news and be standing. I think of how to have your feet shod and ready for the battle is basically to have your your sins nailed to the cross with Yeshua Jesus. To acknowledge your sin, repent of your sin, turn away from your sin, turn and return toward God. That our lives, in essence, are nailed to His. We take up our cross and we follow Him. You know, there's also a, a shoe that I think about that's known as a rest shoe. And it's a special shoe that's used to keep a horse from bearing weight on an injured leg. And it's normally used on a horse that is in stall rest. And I think some are wearing these shoes. Uh, they don't need any further injury. And God is allowing healing to take place before the battle. There's some people that have been greatly injured by Christians uh, in churches, small groups, fellowship. And God's trying to provide a way for them to rest, to keep uh, their weight off of that injured leg. And he has them on stall rest, a time where he can correct them, where he can uh, comfort them, where he can get them to uh, read and, and draw close to him, to where he can prepare them and have them shod ready for the battle that is at hand. You know, shoeing of horses has been around for a long time. Um, they've been be shoeing horses since 1000 AD, and they put cast bronze shoes on them. And there's generally six to eight holes in a horseshoe, but Normally not all the shoes are used. And isn't it interesting how the farrier sizes up the horse or the pony and takes into consideration the action or the job it is involved in and being trained for. As they clean the hoof, they measure and they fit the perfect shoe for that horse and nails it in place so that the shoe doesn't come off and it protects the foundation of the horse. You know, again, I see this picture of Yeshua uh, as a farrier. He sizes each one of us up. He knows how much weight we can bear. He knows the job we're being called to do. He cleans our feet. He cleans the hoof, so to speak. He measures and he fits the perfect shoe on us. And then he nails it in place so it doesn't come off. He wants us to stay nailed or bound to the cross, to the truth of the gospel, the good news the death, burial, and resurrection of Yeshua, Jesus, the Messiah, that took his, our sins upon him, that we could be forgiven and have eternal life. He wants that foundation protected. And there are those today that are preaching a different Yeshua, a different gospel. You know, there's a couple of terms I want to look at before we leave. And one of them is, is the term roughshod. And in the 17th century, a horse that was roughshod had the nails or metal points projecting from the bottom of the shoes. It would give the horse a better traction and it wouldn't slip on the ground or ice. And when the cavalry horses were roughshod, the horse's hooves became a weapon in the charge. If they struck a person, if the horse reared up and struck a person with their hooves, these nails that were uh, sticking through would strike the person. Or if the person was ran over or trampled, they would receive these roughshod um, nails. And aside from hurting the enemy, though, there was a problem that the horse could damage or injure itself by striking a hind foot against a forefront. So that wasn't good to have a roughshod horse. Roman soldiers also wore boots or sandals with small nails protruding to give traction in combat or as another weapon. And we see that if they were, the Roman soldiers had these shoes on like gladiators, uh, it would give them traction in the arena 
And if they were forced on their back and the enemy was on top of them, they could use their feet as uh, weapons and put those sandals or boots with those nails sticking through in the chest or stomach of the person trying to uh, kill them. And they could use that to, to um, hurt them and push them off of them. The next term is slipshod. And that refers to the poor execution or abilities of shoeing a horse. The term slipshod. It refers to the poor execution or abilities of the person shoeing a horse. And I will tell you that the Lord, Adonai Yeshua Jesus, does not do slipshod work. He prepares us for the battle. He is telling us what armor we are to put on, how we are to be prepared with everything that he provides for us. And he tell us, tells us what the battle is about. He gives us abilities when we allow him to help shod our feet, make ready our feet with the gospel, the good news of shalom, peace. He tells us, he instructs us to use all the armor and weaponry that he provides, not that man provides. He doesn't want us to fall in the trap of looking to man for all the answers or depending on man. He tells us how to be ready. We need to be ready. He wants us prepared for the battle, the spiritual warfare battle, from having our feet ready and prepared as we bind them or nail them to the gospel, the good news of the Messiah, his death being nailed to the cross, his burial, we die to self, his resurrection, we will live again. We will be standing after the battle is won. Therefore, we will stand in the truth and the faith of the good news of Yeshua, Jesus. And my question is, are you in union with the Lord? Are your feet shod and made ready? The readiness that comes from the cross and the blood of our Messiah. And do you know Adonai Zevaot? Revelation 19.11 Adonai Zevaot is another name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah. This is how we see him returning in Revelation 19.11. I saw heaven opened and there before me was a white horse. Sitting on it was the one called Faithful and True, and it is in righteousness that he passes judgment and goes to battle. His eyes are like fiery flame, and on his head are many royal crowns, and he had a name written which no one knew but himself. He was wearing a robe soaked in blood, and the name by which he is called is the Word of God. That's the name of Yeshua, Jesus the Messiah. He is Torah made flesh. He is the Word of God made flesh. And in verse 14, it says, The armies of heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and pure, were following him on white. That ultimately ends with the banquet that is for the birds of the air. They will feast on the bodies of the rich, the poor, the famous, the not so famous, leaders of the world, and generals and military people. Yeshua is returning on a white horse. He wants us ready for the battle, and he tells us, have your feet shod. I hope you enjoyed being with me today. We'll look at the other parts of uh, the weaponry, of the armor that uh, he wants us to uh, have on so that we are able to stand against the deceptive tactics of the adversary. But the first thing is your foundation has to be right. The foundation of the truth of who Yeshua Jesus is so that you can stand firm on the day when the battle is won. Uh, leave me your comments uh, so I can see what you think. Uh, maybe you have a question. And I hope you'll uh, join me again someday on some of the teachings in the future. Shalom, shalom.